production seed uh, distribution, which will really help us to achieve better. It's believed that with this bill passed, that it will help us in terms of our seed export from zero to about $2 billion. Of course, there are benefits, but of course, there are also challenges with regards to this bill. And that is why it's important that we all make sure that all the different stakeholders, different interests, different perspectives, that will bring them all together to make sure that at the end of the day, that we have a bill that will help Nigeria and that will have taken into consideration the interests of the different stakeholders, particularly our smallholder farmers and our farmers in the different uh, villages that we have in Nigeria. So for us to start, let me welcome uh, Mrs. Ndidi Muleli, board member, Nigerian Economic Summit Group, co-founder, managing partner, Sahel Consulting, Agriculture and Nutrition Limited, to give us a welcome address. Mrs. Muleli, please. I'm not sure if you can all hear me. Yes, I do hear you clearly. I don't know about others. I'm also hearing you. I'm hearing you also. Thank you very much. I'm also hearing you. Um, Mrs. Mrs. Wunelli, can you, can you hear us please? All right. I'm here. Okay, okay. So welcome again and thank you for joining us. As I've already done an introduction of the topic that we have today, as we all know, is delivery of varieties of high performance to farmers in Nigeria through the inclusion of plant variety protection law, PVP. And we couldn't get a better person to give us a welcome address than Mrs. Ndede Muneli, who is a board member, Nigerian Economic Summit Group, and co-founder, managing partner, Sahar Consulting Agriculture and Nutrition Limited. So we'll be happy to have your welcome address, Mrs. Muneli, please. Thank you very much, and good morning, everyone. It's really my pleasure and privilege to offer the welcome remarks. I'll give a few remarks and then show a short presentation. So let me go through the protocols, heads of ministries, departments and agencies of government, technical advisors and senior special advisors, members of national agricultural research institutes, members of farming associations and cooperatives, academia, captains of industry, members of the international community, gentlemen and ladies of the press and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor and privilege to welcome you to the express review of the Plan Variety Protection Bill. The Plant Variety Protection Bill is a legal instrument that promotes the plant breeders' rights, catalyzes and sustains inclusive systems, seed systems for agricultural transformation in Nigeria. The bill also seeks to establish a Plant Variety Protection Office to coordinate and regulate plant breeding activities in the country. With increasing poverty and hunger in Nigeria, it's expedient to design and implement the solutions to address food security. In the last three years, the estimated population of food insecure Nigerians has doubled from 25 million to 50 million citizens. With ac without access to alternative sources of food or income, smallholder farmers are highly vulnerable to fluctuations in weather patterns, changing in government policy and shifts in both local and international markets. However, one way government policy can influence smallholder food production is by strengthening seed systems and improving the overall availability and accessibility of high quality seeds. At the 26th Nigerian Economic Summit, which held in November 2020, the stakeholders acknowledged that there were many binding constraints that hindered the agricultural sector, and they recognized agricultural inputs as a starting point. So it's critical that we work across board to ensure that we protect the intellectual property rights of Nigerian plant breeders that allow owners of intellectual plant variety property 
to exclude others from marketing and selling their varieties, manage the use of their varieties by other breeders, and enjoy legal protection over their work and earn considerable costs from the long process of varietal development. Despite the depth and level of stakeholder engagement before and after the drafting, as well as the submission of the PVR bill, recent concerns have been raised by different stakeholders regarding the PVP's bill's ability to address the protection of smallholder rights to engage, exchange seeds within their community, the lack of clarity on genetically modified organisms laws, and the lack of position on the integration of informal and formal seed systems, since 80% of locally sourced seeds from smallholder farmers occurs within the informal seed systems. Other concerns suggest that the bill does not favor the conservation of indigenous seeds for future generations, and the bill promotes the functionality of the multinational seed companies over the local seed companies in the Nigerian seed market. Let me at this juncture reiterate that we have to prioritize the provision of food security for our population, projected to reach 400 million by 2050. And we need to accelerate the development of our seed systems. It's therefore my hope that today's experts review dialogue on the significance and constraints of the Plant Variety Protection Bill will help to promote awareness on what legal instrument is set to achieve. And in the end, the, all stakeholders will be unified on a position for the transformation of the food and agriculture sector. At this stage, let me just share a few slides just to underscore the power of collaboratively working in this food system um, and lessons from other parts of the world, uh, which was prepared, this presentation was prepared by my colleagues at Sahel. Just to underscore some of the points in the opening remarks, we really have a challenge around crop yields in Nigeria. And for those who can see the presentation, there's a huge difference between the yields in Nigeria and global breast practices in rice, in maize, in cassava, in yam, and soya bean. And this is no surprise to us, but the magnitude of these differences is con very concerning. When we think about the seed sector and the importance of high quality foundation seed, uh, certified seed, and the need to transform the entire ecosystem, it's critical that all actors work together. I believe the PVP has an important role to play in not only ensuring that we have a strong seed system, but also that actors are incentivized across the board. The provisions of the PVP bill from the breeders' rights, to the farmers' rights is critical because it unlocks all the potential across the ecosystem, enabling the breeders to produce, sell, and ensure high quality seed in the market, but also protecting farmers. And this is critical for our discussion today. There are lots of benefits of plant varietal protection, competitiveness, increased investment in R&D, renewed interest of foreign seed companies in the Nigerian market, and ensuring that we have a developed and competitive seed sector. When you look at Vietnam, and I wanted to just underscore some examples, Vietnam in invested in a PVP and it unlocked tremendous potential. In, in, in fact, in a 24% increase in farmer income, just in the period under consideration, and about $5 billion generated in added value to the GDP of the country. Kenya as well implemented a PVP and has seen tremendous growth in key sectors, not just in terms of employment creation, GDP growth, but unlocking the potential of its cut flower industry and many, many industries over the last 12 years since the PVP was introduced. Poland is another example. Uh, we've seen tremendous growth in the potato industry, in the tomato industry, and the Gebera industry. Um, and there are some constraints, and I hope that we'll be honest about unlocking the opportunities and really delving into these constraints around farmers' rights and farmers' protection around uh, the PVP system and how we can ensure that we create a level playing field and how we can ensure that we don't have um, foreign companies dominating. And there are lots of considerations that we can uh, address um, to ensure that we protect these rights and create a level playing field. Ultimately, it's about the next generation and all of us are in legacy mode. I'm so happy to see uh, Dr. Ojo on this call. Um, he's been doing a great job at NAS, and all of us in this ecosystem are committed to leaving a legacy. I love this quote, and I'll end with this quote. It says, if I tell you my dream, you might forget it. If I act on my dream, perhaps you'll remember it. But if I involve you, it becomes your dream too. All of us have to adopt the dream that we can ensure that Nigeria becomes food self-sufficient. 
and that future generations of Nigerian children will live full and meaningful lives because they have access to affordable, available, nutritious food produced by our farmers, by proudly Nigerian products. We have to work collaboratively to do this. This sense of urgency is real. When I see statistics like 33% unemployment rate, or 84% of Nigerians cannot afford a healthy diet, or 57% of our household income is spent on food, I find that unacceptable in the 21st century. And I invite all of you on behalf of NESG to join our dream to, to transform our food ecosystem. Thank you so much. And I wish you a wonderful day and great deliberations. God bless you all. Thank you very much, Mrs. Muleli, for that very detailed and insightful address. I'm sure that if there's anybody who wanted to learn more or understand more about this bill, the person will have achieved that with that very interesting and detailed address. Thank you very much. And of course, to join us to discuss this bill and to discuss this session, we have assembled the best of the best, people who are very um, engaged and who have the deep experience with regards to this issue that we're discussing. And first on the list is Dr. Philip Oloshegun Ojo, the Director General Chief Executive Officer for the National Agricultural Seeds Council, NSE. So Dr. Ojo, you're highly welcome. And on the list, is uh, Dr. Ijoma Akongo, who is the plant breeder of the Agricultural Technology Foundation. Dr. Akogo, you're welcome. And on the list as well of our experts that will discuss this is Mr. Nimo Basi, who's the director of Health of Mother Earth Foundation. And joining them also is Professor Chidozie Egesi, who is interestingly the president of the Nigerian Plant Breeders Association. And also to discuss this session, the last but not the least is Dr. Lumiwa Alaba, who is the Trade Thematic Group Leader, Nigerian Economic Summit Group, Trade Investment and Competitive Policy Commission. I'm sure you will all agree with me that the people that we've assembled, the experts that we've assembled today, we cannot get better set of experts. And to kick start, I think it might be important that we give the panel members, given their diverse experience and the kind of issues that this bill has raised, now give the experts, our panel members, about five to 10 minutes. So more or less five, eight minutes, that, that should be fine for now. to so really discuss certain areas that we believe will enrich the discussion of what we're trying to do today. So let me, first of all, start with Professor Ojo. But I will want to ask you, uh, uh, sorry, Dr. Ojo, I want to ask you, so what do you think is the significance of PVP bill to the seed subsector and the agricultural sector of Nigeria? Thank you, Dr. Ojo. Yeah, uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you. I want to thank uh, other members who are on this panel. Uh, I want to say that I have a presentation which I actually uh, wanted to actually uh, display. But since you're asking this question, I think it's very important for me to answer directly. Uh, the PVP is actually very, very important. We have a lot of regulations in Nigeria that governs the seed industry. And uh, you discover that it's like a table with uh, three legs. And the first leg is the PVP. And PVP is so important that it's just like a table with, uh, with three legs without the fourth leg. The fourth leg, like I said, is the PVP. And the PVP is so important in the fact that it gives protection to uh, uh, intellectual property of breeders. It is so important because we need to actually get the best genetics and these best genetics are actually provided by breeders and they have to be protected because without it, we will not be able to get 
everything that we need in terms of food security and the rest of it. So it is that important that we must have the a plant variety protection rights in Nigeria. And very well, we have done a lot, particularly in this area. We have gone to the National Assembly. The National Assembly have actually uh, looked at this and the law has been passed and we are waiting for the assent of Mr. President. So that will show you how important it is because we are losing a lot. Because a lot of sea companies, particularly outside this country, we not want to bring in their best genetic for the benefit of our farmers because they are not protected. So it is that important because we want the best for our farmers. We want the best for our breeders. Breeders have to be given what it takes in terms of protecting them, giving them benefit for their inventions. So that will tell you how far and how important this is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Joe, for that very um, brief but very uh, crisp, uh, uh, good point and explanation in terms of the importance of the PVP bill. So let me take it to Dr. Akon. Based on what DG just explained, what do you think with regards to the sustainability of the, uh, the, the importance of the PVP bill to the sustainability of the Nigerian food and agricultural ecosystems? Dr. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, we can hear you. Okay, we are seeing you now. Thank you very much, it's better now. Okay. Thank you very much. With regards to what uh, Professor Ojo had said, we know that plant breeding, you know, takes a long while. With the conventional plant breeding, it takes like 15 years for you to develop a variety. And then how do you encourage a plant breeder that has done that work that maybe spent the whole of his life just to develop a variety? You know, so the PBP bill is like a reward, is an encouragement to the plant breeder that has taken his life, you know, in order to sustain you know, to develop a variety that will contribute to food security and also nutrition to the general public. That's number one. Secondly, the importance of this bill is that it's going to create an avenue for investment. We know that the public uh, um, breeding sector is not sustainable. You know, looking at the Nigerian population, now we are over 200 million and we expect it to be more than that by year 2050, then how do we sustain this population? It will continue doing the way we are with the public sector and with the way the funding is going is not going to be sustainable. Then how do we encourage the private sectors to come into this? The private sector can come into this when you know there's an incentive. You know, they'll be able to engage a breeder because to pay a breeder is also very expensive. If they're able to engage a breeder and they know they develop a variety and they get like a incentive, a royalty, for developing, that, for developing that variety, they are going to put in their best to do that. Now, another thing again is, we look at the agricultural sector, is actually the backbone of the economy. When Mr. President came into power, because of the dwindling in the oil sector price, he advocated about improving the agricultural sector. And in most developed countries, the agricultural sector is actually what is actually you know, raining. How do we bring it back home in Nigeria? How do we make agricultural sector to be very, very recreative? How do we make it so that the young people, you know, everybody mustn't do a white collar job. How do we create, you know, eliminate unemployment? The agricultural sector answers a lot of those questions, but putting this kind of bill in place is going to actually help. The Department of Registry and the Patent Law in the Federal Ministry of Trade and Environment Trade and investment, you know, does not provide a bill for the plant breeders. The plant variety is not among the team patented. So this is the only bill, you know, that was actually going to encourage a plant breeder to be able to do his work, you know, create in investment, promote foreign trade and investment and do a lot of things. We can really do a lot of things with this, uh, once this bill is in place. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Akog, for, for that. I mean, you've more or less saying that the PVP bill will help in terms of sustaining Nigerian food and active ecosystems. Yes. More or less supporting what Dr. Ojo said and saying that it is actually a bill that we need that will really help to increase, sustain our agri agricultural sector. So with that, let me, let's, of course, we, we bring the address. We heard that there are some views and comments and, and concerns with regards to the PVP bill, one to the smallholder farmers in Nigeria, and also to the health issues of this PVP bill. So let me ask um, Mr. Limon Bass, what do you think in terms of implications of this PVP bill on the health, biosafety, and environmental sustainability in Nigeria? Mr. Limon Bassi, please. Thank you so much for inviting me to this program. I must thank the Nigerian Environment uh, Economic Study Group uh, for putting this together. This is one of the most respected institutions that we have in a country that is very challenged with the quality of institution that we have. And so this is very important. So thank you so much. Now, the bill we're talking about, the Plant Variety Protection Bill, is not a bill for Nigeria. It's not a bill for that will support the small scale farmers in Nigeria, as the bill proclaims right from article or clause one, uh, is a bill that would work very well in, in a scenario where you have, where agriculture is a business where just a few people, big companies are the ones developing seeds, corporation developing seeds, uh, and then looking for ways to amass profit. It's not for a country where 80% uh, of the people are engaged in uh, small-scale farming and people are being fed by, by these small-scale farmers. Uh, we always underestimate the productivity of small-scale farmers and because of this we, we end up, end up um, shifting support from them to, to supporting transnational corporations and seed monopolies. This is something that we, we need to address in this nation. Our small scale farmers require supports, but this bill, I looked at many parts of the bill that something we need to worry about, as well as international treaties and declarations. For example, uh, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Peasants and other people working in rural areas clearly show that our people must have a right to their seats, accordance, you know, using traditional knowledge. Uh, our farmers have been selecting the best seats, preserving the best seats, sharing the best seats. And for years, they've, they've, done, they've done that successfully. And in fact, researchers have shown that the future of food production is still will be dependent on small scale farmers. And the bill, uh, there are many things to worry about the bill itself. I've gone, we've gone through it. Uh, I believe that bill should be opened one more time for public debate before it goes, it should be taken back from the president because I don't think it's ready for, for signature. Plus nine, for example, establishes an advisory committee that includes GMO promoters. When you have genetic engineering promoters sitting on a board to advise on the plant variety bill, then act, you, you certainly know where the direction is going to move to. Uh, and then secondly, um, we have clauses like clause 13, uh, subsection two, saying the grant, the, the grant of the breeder's right shall not be subject to any further or different conditions. You're telling me that with this bill, you're going to pre preclude the development of our appropriate laws and policies to decriminalize farmers. Because once this bill comes into play, uh, many of our seeds are going to be declared. In, in South Africa, they were called grains and not seeds. Uh, it's very insulting and very uh, something that we cannot accept in Nigeria. And it, it, when it, in the welcome remarks, we heard about how you puff uh, the bill, the kind of similar something was very, very effective in Vietnam. The, the, the research that, that promoted that showed that there was such a positive uh, solution in Vietnam was actually debunked by further researches because the seeds that were being researched into were not, they were not registered or uh, bills that were in the end agreement of this nature. And then the other thing I worry about is that um, there's a place that in, in the bill, in the bill that says that varieties already protected by a member of an international organization, if such a member applies or is party to an application, that will certainly be registered without much uh, interrogation. I mean, you are telling me that 
those I mean, companies from the US, for example, where, where seats may be registered or whatever, once they bring it to Nigeria, the registrar, re registrar's hands are tied and it has to, to register them. Uh, that doesn't appear to be democratic, neither does it appear to be the interest of our country. Um, and then there's another place that says that um, the, the, there's a committee that can take donations, grants to be accepted from government or any other person. What is that? Any other person? There's no definition about who is the any other person. Just anybody. It could be vested interest. It could be the usual suspects coming to, to give money to this agency. Then, of course, that would, that would certainly compromise uh, what we are talking about. Clause 29 from uh, subsection 5 and 6 opens the gate for genetic, genetically modified seeds because it described them as unique seeds, unique varieties to be registered and protected. And uh, uh, at this point, I think from those clauses, uh, these are major concerns, but briefly, I'll just talk about the health and biosafety issue of biosafety. Number one is that Nigerians have a right to safe and nutritious food. Genetically modified foods have not been proven to be safe or nutritious. It's all speculation. Neither, there's no, no proof in other direction. So when people say that the food system is not producing nutritious food, we are, we are, we are being very economical with the truth. And when we measure the productivity of our farms and say they are not measuring up, we have to look at the type of farm, the circumstance, the, the, is it a monoculture or is it mixed cropping? And then also the gene this issue of genetic engineering. Since I engineered to withstand certain herbicides like Roundup Ready, which has, been, has caused a lot of harm to people in the US and elsewhere, and many court cases, are, thousands of court cases, and some have been won. Uh, this, this since engineered to withstand that chemical, uh, the chemical is already here in Nigeria. And so when you bring those seeds further, you are going to explode the usage of those chemicals. And this will create a degradation in biodiversity because they don't only kill the weeds that are designed to kill, they kill unintended plants that are useful to us. And the lawsuits in the US are about uh, these chemicals causing cancers, whether they, they do or not, but this is what the cases are in the court. And then some of the GM seeds are engineered to act as pesticides, like the BT beans or cowpea that is almost in the market. Uh, farmers have been given, plant, the plant is on the way to give to farmers to cultivate. Now, when you eat a seed that acts as pesticide, you are eating a pesticide. And it has implications for your health when you feed on pesticides. GMOs, sometimes we're told that, well, people can choose whether to eat or not, labeling. Labeling doesn't work in our system because of a social cultural way we market food. Nobody labels GMO Akara or GMO Bole or GMO uh, something by the roadside, Gary, for example. So we're going to be eating what we don't know. So we have to decide, do, do, should Nigerians have a choice or should just close our eyes and eat because we're hungry people? Allowing the, using this bill to bring in GMO through the back door is extremely dangerous. And then farmers will be forced to buy seeds. They may be high yielding the first time you plant them, but if you save those and plant them again, the product decreases. And the farmers who want to have high, you keep on going to the market every year, and this will be a big pressure. I would also distort our farming system. Now, finally, my final point is that we are very worried that the biosafety regulatory agencies are already ready to start receiving applications on gene engineering, uh, gene drive, synthetic biology, and other extreme genetic engineering. This could drive extinction of species, colonization of agriculture, and can readily be weaponized. With all this, I don't see why we should. This bill ought not to have been approved by the National Assembly. Perhaps they didn't have the right information, they didn't have the other side of the story, and we shouldn't be too shy to call it back and review it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Bassi, for that elaborate, uh, well, I say counter observations and comments with regards to this PVP bill, which is more or less, as I said, contrary to what we've heard in terms of the benefits, in terms of the, the impacts that this bill, positive impact that this bill will have on the economy and agricultural sector of Nigeria. And let me take it to uh, Professor Gessie. Just in addition to what Mr. Bassi has explained with regards to the health implications, GMO issues, regards to this bill. There are also, there are also concerns that there is no provision in this PVP law on protecting farmers' interests and rights for posterity's sake, such as establishing community seed banks, gene banks for saving and protection of indigenous seeds for future generations, 
As farmer safe seeds or indigenous seeds are recognized as adaptable to climatic conditions and possess climate or possess climate change mitigation properties from numerous research evidence. Another issue is can a farming community whose indigenous seeds are adapted to their soil mapping and soil area patterns and soil area, and soil area pattern their indigenous varieties? Another issue is where is where is the intersection between the informal seed sector and the informal seed sector and the Formal seed sector. Since eight percent of our seeds are currently sourced from the informal seed sector, and we also issue that the bill does not address uh, infidelity theft from farmers' indigenous seeds, which is with eight percent of Nigerian atmospheric farmers being illiterate or semi-illiterate. So, based on this and other on other issues with regards to this bill, and as also uh, mentioned and stated by Mr. Bass, my question to you, Professor Egesi, is. What do you think in terms of the, this bill will, in terms of enhancing the sustainability of agricultural practices and provide for you to produce products from Nigeria to compete favorably in the market to the PVP bill? Do you think that the PVP bill will really support Nigeria? Will it really help Nigerian farmers? Will it really help the agricultural sector to really compete favorably with international, in the international market? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you to my fellow panelists, especially to the last one. I, I have a deep respect for him and his, uh, the clout he brings. Um, but uh, Mr. Moderator, I'm a little confused. Are we talking about the plant variety protection bill or are we talking about the biosafety bill or are we talking about the seed act? Because there are a lot of things I've heard this morning that are uh, um, alluding to those other things while I'm here or I was asked to prepare for something else. Um, so let me start with um, a few uh, things to clear it. I, I think um, the, the, the evidence we have that today our current kind of agriculture is not working at its best is by how much see, how much, how much, how much food imports are we having in Nigeria? How much how many millions of dollars, if not billions, are we of food importation is happening today? Um, not only for Nigeria, but in Africa. Um, so I, I think those are, that's a big question that we, we, we all know that we are importing rice, we're importing wheat. Um, we're only not importing things like yam and cassava because this is where we grow them. Uh, but, but I mean, we have enough resources and we have enough um, uh, 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 land and all it takes to, 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 to have enough rice, even to be a net food exporter rather than a, an importer. So having said that, I think that we, we, we are here for the plant variety protection bill. And it's a bill that's addressing uh, issues around the, the breeder. Uh, uh, why, why is the breeder not motivated to give his best? And why are seed, even our local seed companies are not giving their best? Because, I mean, you, you ask what's the value proposition you bring on board when you say um, uh, invest in breeding and, and derive all the benefits in breeding. So I think it is meant to ensure that investment, there is enough investment in plant breeding programs, which is not the case right now for Nigeria. It is also meant to ensure that our farmers benefit because our farmers are not growing their, the best of seeds that can be had. And, and they, 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 you, you will think, why is it that you ask young people to go into agriculture and they are like looking at you like you hate them? It's because they don't see any value in going into agriculture. It's supposed to be a business, but do you have a proven case or how many proven cases do you have that are indigenous? and the socioeconomic benefits for the country. Um, someone earlier said how Vietnam benefited, but it's not just Vietnam. I have examples of uh, South Africa. I have example of Kenya. Kenya, they cut flowers. It's because they have this kind of bill. And Nigeria is a signatory to some of these uh, treaties, uh, plant variety protection uh, promoted by the International Union of, for the Protection of New Varieties of Plants, and whose mission is to provide and promote an effective system of uh, 
plant variety protection with the aim of encouraging the development of new varieties of plants for the benefits of society. Uh, and this is signed off by about 96 countries. Uh, and, and I think, um, you know, it is something that conforms with the World Trade Organization's agreement on trade and related aspects of intellectual property rights. Um, so when you think about where do farmers stand, I'm asking myself, so are farmers fine with the crops they are growing? Yes or no? How much profit do they make from it? Why is it not a, why don't you hear of a, you know, small farmer? You know, Nigeria has 200 million plus uh, people. How would you feed these people if you're continuing with subsistence agriculture? Why do you think that we are still where we are, you know, 60 years after independence in terms of food productivity? We used to produce enough and export when the population were, were, were fewer in number. But you know, you and I understand that we cannot continue doing that and expect the kind of prosperity that we desire. So we need to do things differently. Um, the, 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 the countries in even Ghana is also, so when you ask those questions about farmer, I would say the farmer needs the right seeds to produce. And the seed acts, which we have in Nigeria, address those issues that you ask about farmers are protected, seeds are you know, preserved. You look at our national, national Center for Genetic Resources and Biotechnology, NAGRAB, their, 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 their mandate is to preserve um, and conserve uh, um, uh, genetic resources, whether it's uh, 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 plants or animals. And they are doing that. The, the thing you ask is, are they properly funded? Then that is a different ball game. So let's not introduce into the plant variety uh, protection bill what should not be there or what is already being addressed by other bills. You talk about GMOs or gene edited crops, the biosafety bill is there. Do you want to go around it to adjust it to accommodate more? That's a different thing from today's discussion. Um, do you want to talk about the Seed Act, which we are practicing now? It is already in practice and is not in question here today. So bringing it about uh, seeds and grains is, is modeling things up because we cannot be asking this bill to address what other bills in Nigeria have addressed. So, so I, I would like to say, let us focus on the plant variety uh, protection bill. It is something to deal with, uh, 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 is a missing gap, is a missing link in all that we've had. And now that we have it, we need to move forward to design and implement a system for making it operational. Not to, not to trash it because you cannot ask us to trash what is needed um, and set up maybe an, an ICT based uh, PVP system that will facilitate the process of application to the stage of granting uh, plant breeders rights. And there is a place to protect the farmer in that thing. You, you even protect other scientists, it's not only farmer that needs protection, even other scientists, researchers. So if I'm working in a, in, a, in, a, in a center and that center is the one that has applied for plant breeders rights, I can ask for exemption. And the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the office, the PVP office has a, has a window to accept or to reject. Same for a farmer. You know, farmers are the first and foremost, the first breeders. Farmers are the first breeders. They select crops based on what they want. And that is breeding. So a farmer can say, I have selected this over time and I want to apply for this. And then we will move forward with it. And, and I think that's where the protection comes. But the protection comes together with the seed act, which enables a farmer to produce seeds, you know, and, and be able to market the same. And mind you, seed is not the same as grains. So let's not confuse seeds with grains. Grain is the one you can go to the market and buy cowpea, for example. You buy food, uh, buy it like food, and you go to your kitchen and cook it and feed yourself and family. But seed is a different thing. Seed is, I want to get the best produce um, uh, for from my crop harvest. So if you don't plant the right seed, you're not going to have the right harvest. Why is it that our productivity has been so low for many decades? 
This is the reason. And this is one of the ways to act, to, to deal with it. The seed act was first of all to deal with it. But the seed act cannot function without a good PVP because the breeder needs to be motivated to do that. And uh, I like what Dr. Munelli and uh, what Ms. Munelli said earlier on. She said, we should make it in such a way that it is not hijacked. And that is our call as uh, nationals of Nigeria. We have to make it that it's not hijacked by any foreign interest. And I think that we all love Nigeria. Nobody can claim that they love Nigeria more than we do. I mean, personally speaking for myself, nobody can claim they love Nigeria more than I do. So we should not jeopardize the interests of the nation or the farmers of the nation at the altar of any multinational. But is there any good in the multinationals or are they all evil? So those are questions we, that need answers. I don't think that they are all evil. So how do I use uh, my office and uh, my 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 rationality as a as a Nigerian as a as a as a patriotic Nigerian to bring the power of science to bear on the benefits of both small farmers smallholder farmers in Nigeria and the, the even ben benefit even SMEs that are going to derive a product productivity from the have from the high harvest high yielding harvest I will get from my from my uh, in in in, in, very, in investment in, in agriculture. Those are things I think, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cap it there, Mr. Moderator. But I mean, if there's more that you think I didn't address, I'll be very glad to do that. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, uh, Professor Gessie. And um, it's, it's becoming more interesting in terms of the, the divergences in terms of from the views. But I think it might be important that um, uh, there, 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 there's need for more clarification. And I will be calling on uh, the DG, CEO of the uh, National Agricultural Seeds Council, to make a presentation. But before I do that, I will be happy to hear from Dr. Alaba with regards to some of these issues that we've had. Some people say PPP bill is good for us, some people say it's not good for us based on some of the issues with that small other farmers, the health implications, and all that and all that. So, but even before Dr. Joe makes the presentation, I would be happy, Dr. Alaba, if you can, based on what we've heard, to share insights on international trade agreement, exploring the TRIPS and UPOV agreement, and the PVP bill implication on trade between Nigeria and other countries, based on all we've discussed today. Dr. Alaba. Uh, thank you so much for, for inviting me here. Uh, the plant protection um, uh, bill or plant variety protection bill, as it is called. Um, okay. Sorry. Um, the plant variety protection bill. Uh, 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 act as uh, we are discussing is under, like you said, the trade related um, aspect of international property, international property rights in the WTO. How did WTO address uh, the, the issue? WTO does not have any comprehensive or any definite uh, uh, laws or regulation regarding plant uh, variety protection. What it does is to encourage countries to go to pro-relateral agreements in terms of signing treaty among each other, you know, to interact in terms of protecting, you know, the rights of, of, of breeders in those, um, uh, in, in those countries. So what it encourages is for countries, nations to sign treaty among each other. And whatever treaty they are signing will have to be negotiated. So the negotiating content is what you actually have to implement. But in general, the, uh, the general rule in WTO, you know, still maintain the issue of reciprocity. That is, you give to me what I give to you, it recognizes the issue of national treatment. What does national treatment mean? It means that, uh, you know, when we have agreements and I produce uh, a variety in my country, and I access market in your country, 
that should be treated as if it's coming from your country. That's national treatment. We have so many other, uh, you know, like we have uh, most preferred nations treatment, which means that the conditions given to each of the nations that has negotiated and agreed on treaty must not be different. You must not, uh, you, you know, that there must not be asymmetric treatment from breeders from one country to the other. Be that as it, as it may, the WTO agreement is like a general agreement which gives countries liberty to negotiate among each other. But in terms of protection of uh, breeders' rights, there are I, 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 there are quite a number of uh, undertakings. There are quite a number of uh, uh, conventions and there are quite a number of uh, uh, international laws that actually protect the, 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 the laws. Because when we are talking about plant variety protection, it emanates from the existing varieties from those communities. So traditionally, they have right to it. And there's a convention by the UN that says Actually, plant variety is human right. So it considers the rights of both the locals and uh, the people that are bringing their money to invest. And uh, like uh, Prof said, do we want to continue uh, the way we are, that we have no productivity for, for, for our efforts? There's, I, I, I think South Africa, you know, with little efforts, they are able to generate high, high productivity, uh, you know. So do we want to continue like that? Mm -hmm. uh, see, in terms of market structure, let me give an example. The IITA, uh, you know, produces cassava stem, which everybody, including myself as a farmer, we rush there. Many times, you don't even get to buy. You know, so if we encourage investment based on international treaties and agreements that protect farmers, and I'll mention some of them, it is actually better for us as a nation. You know, the 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 some of the the, the you know treaties that protect uh, the rights of uh, of the farmers, uh, the WIPO integrated. Uh, Committee on uh, Intellectual Property Rights, Genetic Resources, and Traditional Knowledge and from it's, it's, it's actually specific about protection of uh, the, the traditionalists, of domestic breeders, of, uh, of, of uh, plant varieties. So we cannot say they are not protected. If you look at um, uh, also the, the, the FAO, the, 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 the FAO, uh, uh, FAO Resolution 5-89 of, uh, of, of, of plants, uh, plant protection. It's actually, you know, it's specific about protection of traditional breeders. So they are protected. All we need to do is to look at all of this. There is a bio-piracy agreement. There is a... Uh, You are so we can hear you again. Well, sorry, I, I don't know what happened. So, th there are quite a number of international treaties that actually uh, protect the breeders, both local breeders and multinationals that will come in. Because multinationals are coming in to improve traditional breeds. So, in terms of protection of rights of traditional knowledge, access and benefit sharing, you know, the, 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 those treaties actually mention protection of uh, the, the small older farmers. So maybe in the course of reviewing this, we need to go back to all of those treaties and look at their provisions and then uh, insert those provisions as it is in international treaties in those agreements. And that will make uh, the, 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 the bill more robust in terms of protection of uh, both the multinationals, private sectors, and uh, uh, that are involved and uh, smallholders farmer. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Dr. Laba, for that um, 
uh, interesting contribution which seems to support that we need the PVD to really uh, enhance the grain in Islam and also the development of, um, of the agricultural sector in Nigeria. So from what I've heard, or from what we've um, we'll be hearing today, there are, there are divergent views in terms of do we need the PVP bill or don't we need it? Maybe we need it, but it needs to address certain issues like farmer, uh, smallholder farmers, like issue of GMO, like this, like that, and other issues. But it might be good, I think, to help us to provide more clarification and understanding. I will please invite the Director General, Chief Executive Officer of National Agricultural Seed Council, NAC, NASC, Dr. Philip Ojo, to make a presentation that will help us to provide more clarification on the issues that we are discussing. Dr. Ojo, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank, thank, thank you very much. I would will, I will prefer uh, my uh, senior technical advisor, Dr. Kyolola, to actually share uh, the presentations and okay, as I sharing, uh, actually, this paper is uh, about the significance of PVP Act to the seeds of sector and the Nigeria food and natural ecosystem. Uh, the, we, myself, and my uh, advisor will present. But let me start by saying, uh, if you look at uh, the first slide. Uh, it's about the topic and the presenters. And the second slide, we are talking about the movie industry in Nigeria, the, the Nollywood. And we know it has contributed a lot to the economy of this country. And it has recruited a number of people. And so many people have been recruiting along the entertainment value chain. And uh, if you look at it, Nollywood 40 years ago is not the Nollywood of today. Those days, you'll be talking about Baba Sala, Hobart Tugunde, and the new masquerade. I'll be on your right side, you'll see a Jennifer uh, Funke Akindele, which is actually a product of intellectual property because a lot is now being actually, uh, you know, accrued, gained, actually coming on board because of the intellectual property that is being introduced gradually into the new level. And hitherto, and even up to today, Nolly would have a lot of people who are actually there, either as drummers and other entertainers that are actually there. And they will continue to go to be there, despite the fact that there is uh, intellectual property being introduced. And that's exactly what is going to happen, particularly with the introduction of the PVP. Uh, also, if you look at oil pump, we all know oil palm originated from West Africa, but what value are actually we getting from it today? What are we getting from the white knots? But today, it is actually a multi-billion dollar oil palm industry, particularly in Indonesia and Malaysia. And studies are that all those things were actually taken from Nigeria. But because they were not protected, we are not getting anything out of it. And this is actually a pointer to the fact that intellectual property is exactly very important. And we are losing a lot. And we'll continue to lose a lot if we don't do anything about it. And that's exactly why the government of Nigeria had to do a lot to ensure that we entrench it. And if you look at it, see that it was actually one of those things that the seed I pointed to is actually a, uh, a kind of a, a something that is going to partner with the seed that for us to have what it takes to develop the seed industry and ensure food security in Nigeria. So Nollywood, like I said, is a product of intellectual property. And we need to ensure that Intelligent property is actually introduced. If you look at uh, uh, slide six, PVP that we are talking about is actually 
and territorial protection of our varieties in Nigeria. And like I mentioned, it's going to be an additional tool for the regulation of the seed industry. Because if all of them are there, the traditional conventions, the laws, and the regulations that oversees the industry is actually complete, but they are not going to be complete without the PVP. If they are complete, if you look at this slide, you see a farmer that has benefited from all this. He has a lot of choices to make from all the, uh, uh, all, all the various uh, uh, information and conventions that are available. And he's actually very happy because he has choices to make, including the PVP. That is actually very important. But all the laws must be there. But if the laws are not complete, if the PVP is not there, the farmer would not be happy because he's not going to have information available. He does not have all what it takes from all the other parts for him to be happy. And that's exactly why you see this farmer here, not happy. So it is actually very important for us to have what it takes. Now, what is uh, variety protection? We said this illegal destination designed to protect breeders and grant them an intellectual property right over their planting materials. And who is even a breeder? I'm happy Professor Gessie mentioned that the first breeder is even the farmer because uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Basi was talking about, you know, alienated farmers and the rest of it. But from the PVP, you discover that even farmer is a breeder and is even the first breeder, like my friend, Dr. Jesse mentioned. And also the PVP is so important. It is important because it has a lot of things that we're going to gain. Our varieties will be protected and you're going to encourage investment in plant breeding and crop variety development. Our breeders will be very, very uh, uh, encouraged because they are going to get a lot of incentive, a lot of benefits from their inventions. And you see a lot of people coming into the breeding space in order to get a lot of varieties into the space. And farmers, at the end of the day, we have a lot to benefit. And at the end of the day, we are going to have a lot to benefit from the industry. When we are talking of sea security, it, sea security is not just about ensuring that seas are there. It is actually a way to actually ensure food security, which we are all looking for in Nigeria. Let me call on uh, uh, Dr. Kilola, my senior advisor, when it comes to issues of PVP, to actually complete the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. John. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, my Director General, and uh, thank you for laying uh, the very good foundation. And uh, I will take up from when the where the General has stopped and uh, say that uh, for us in the Seed Council, our primary aim is the protection of the rights of the farmers. And uh, one of why we are introducing PVP is to ensure that feelers we are getting from farmers and the industry to make sure that Nigeria is food secured is met. Today, a lot of uh, things that our farmers need are imported by way of importation of seeds. And when you tell, uh, as our policy, we don't encourage commercial importation of seeds because we want the farmers to develop. Nigeria will not continue to sustain farmers in other countries and import seeds from other con or those countries to uh, feed Nigeria. Our farmers can produce those things and those things must be produced in Nigeria. And if they should be produced, we need that intellectual property protection. Now, we all know of the huge challenge that we need to overcome. By 2050, the world population will reach 9.5 billion. We know that 50% of the current arable land will become unusable. There are the risks that we face due to climate change. And of course, the need to maximize effective use of available water becomes important. So genetic contribution from plant breeding have become critically important. And you can only get this genetic contribution with 
the introduction of plant breeding. We know today that Nigeria is not uh, getting the best from plant breeding, and it has been alluded to by the presentation earlier by uh, Mrs. Nwunilu. Plant breeding is a long-term and costly activity. It involves high investment in research and development. We know that 15% of turnover of companies in developed system is plunged into plant breeding. It's a cutting edge technology. And because investment in R&D has increased in other clans, that is why they've been able to reduce the duration for development of varieties and have increased uh, availability of I uh, varieties to their farmers. So what is the new choice that the PVP will bring to farmers? We will see it in this pyramid. And this pyramid, we answer some of the, you know, uh, dumping up of issues that we have listened to in the earlier uh, presentations, which Dr. Uh, Professor Egesi has tried to say, are we talking about a PVP Act or something else? Now, this is the seed pyramid. In the seed pyramid, we have the white populations, we have land races, we have farmers save seeds, we have the community-based organization, and we have the unprotected land varieties, which the Seed Act currently regulates. What the PVP is bringing is the other choice on the seed pyramid that Nigeria farmers will have access to. So we need to say it clearly that the PVP Act will not regulate all these things. We have other laws. We have the International Treaty for uh, Plant Genetic Resources of the FAO, the Convention on Biodiversity, the Seed Act, and other regulations that addresses all the issues that uh, Mr. Bassi had mentioned. The PVP Act is just introduced to ensure that our farmers have an additional choice of protected plant varieties that they can use. Uh, it's their choice. And the farmer, we have said it, can also be a breeder to protect uh, varieties. We know of the, the Ofada rice. We know of the Abakadiki rice. All those brands can be protected by the farmers in those communities, and they can get money to develop those varieties better than what it is today. That is what PVP provides. In addition, it provides a wider pool of genetic resources for our breeders because all what new varieties we are bringing in, we now join in the, in the pool of our genetic resources. Let me say emphatically that we should this, see what the plant variety bill is all about. It's about new varieties. With the introduction of the plant variety uh, protection law, all the existing uh, practices of our farmers, nobody will tamper with them. We are only giving them an additional choice. And this additional choice, we join the pool from which our breeders draw from to develop new varieties. It is this pool that breeders use to develop uh, the varieties. It is this pool that become land races and white population over time. And it is this pool that we also lead to the development of protected plant varieties that people will now say have invested to use this variety. I need to grant you permission to do it. And that is what the PVP is all about. And the breeders exemption as provided for by the PVP Act, we make this materials also available for other breeders for other breeding work and development of new varieties. Just as the Nagoya Protocol, the Convention on Biodiversity and the ITPGFR provides the space in the other regulations currently for breeders to assess without uh, hindrance pool of genetic materials from these places. So whether a farmer or anybody, there are exemptions for you to use this material for the development of other better varieties. And we should know that we are looking beyond the rice, the maize, the cowpea. The PVP will open Nigeria to also to invest or to go into cut flower production production, we can develop our sugar industry, we can develop our oil palm industry. It opens the space for a lot wider than uh, the food crop and whatever that we focus on today. So this is just what this uh, table is also saying, that all these things will remain as they are. Nobody is changing them. We are only creating another option for farmers to decide from. So PV, PBR is a farmer's right to choice, and we should not deny them that choice. 
The PVP Act has nothing to do with genetically modified organisms. Mr. Bassi had brought it up very, very clearly, and Professor Egesi had asked the question, are we talking of the Biosafety Act or uh, other acts that are already in place? PVP Act has nothing to do with genetic modified organism, and we should not bring genetic GMO issues into the PVP Act. PVP Act will only ensure that we have more hybrids. We only have hybrid maize today, but there is hybrid sorghum, there is hybrid millet, there is hybridization in all those technology. Nobody will invest in it if we cannot recoup his investment. So that is what the PVP will bring so that farmers can get better yield. It's only maize today that you can get hybrids that will give you uh, five, six tons per hectare. And farmers are buying it. But in other crops, we are still limited to open pollinated varieties. So for PVP Act, we are talking about what we enable people to invest in hybridization and other technologies that can help agriculture and not GM. It has nothing to do also with the commercialization of market regulation because there are other laws that take uh, charge of all this. So what are the benefits of the PVP Act? A lot have been said about it, I will just go through them. Promotion of breeding of new varieties, that is what it will do. Now, breeding is public sector dominated and government is not even funding research. When we have the PVRP Act, the private sector can now come into breeding and we will have more breeders. Our farmers, our communities, those people who have done farming for many years and have discovered new varieties also can bring them forward and protect them. Note that we are saying new. The condition for granting of that right is that the material must be distinct, uniform, and stable, and must be new from all existing materials. So we are not talking about the materials that our farmers are using. Nobody will stop them from using it. It will protect the result of breeding and assures adequate return on your investment. The breeders exemption provide access to newest genetics, uh, genetic material for future breeding. Breeders continue to develop new varieties only if there is insurance of good return. And that is what the law is bringing on the table. It will create an incentive to stimulate new breeders and new breeding work. So a lot of people will now come into the space and know that as a breeder, you can take it as a career. There are a lot of graduates from the university that have read breeding, but they are not breeding anything. Our professors are there, they are not breeding, they are not contributing to Nigeria's economy. But with the PVP Act, they will go back to the drawing board and people will start to invent and innovate new varieties that will transform the lives of farmers in Nigeria. It will create positive effect equally to the private sector and the public sector, either individually or in partnership. That is what is happening in other clans of the world. All the materials being traded by the multinationals today are gotten from the public sector. So let's insist that we have a PVP Act and nobody will continue to give us excuse that we can't bring our best genetics into Nigeria because it is not protected. The Seed Act says that when you want to invest in seed sector in Nigeria, you must produce locally. But these people cannot bring those genetics if there is no protection. We cannot continue to implement the heart. We cannot continue to allow them to import uh, uh, seeds into Nigeria. What can benefit our own farmers? Nigeria is not a dumping ground. We are a production center. We have all the, what it takes to produce all those materials. And the only entrance from we that we are in the field is the PVP Act. And that is what we are bringing strongly from the national agrarian seed sector. It will provide important benefits in an international context by removing barriers to trade. Nigeria can become a like a Kenya and we can become the hub of seed sector in West Africa. That is the vision of the DG to transform Nigeria into a center of excellence for seed industry where we can start to import seeds and benefit from the international trade. As a consequence of the breeders exemption, domestic breeders will also gain access to valuable varieties that were eaten to outside and they can use it for their own further breeding. 
There will be increase in number of applications for protections, increase in number of applications from breeders not based even in Nigeria, and increasing availability of improved varieties for our farmers, increased access of foreign jam passing, which is needed to develop better varieties, and increased number of commercial breeding entities as against what we have now that we only have few public sector entities and they have only one breeder or two breeder. Uh, no wonder we don't have good quality seed that can give the farmers the return that, that they need. And for the Nigerian farmers, bigger choice of variety. The farmer has a right to choose. Do I want to buy a protected variety that will give me 10 tons or I want to buy a non-protected variety that will give me five tons, or I want to use my own farm safe seeds that will give me one or two metric tons. That is the option that we are bringing into the space. Nobody is stopping the farmers from doing what they are doing. The DG said it. Uh, today, Nollywood, nobody will stop that local drummer from drumming and doing his own entertainment. He, the space is free for all, but uh, all the other people too can do their own uh, work the way they know how to do it. There will be better performing varieties because if somebody is selling a protected variety and he says this variety will give 10 tons, if that variety does not give the farmer or the user who buys it 10, 10 tons, he can challenge that person and, you know, take him to court and make claims. That is what we, we it will bring access to wider scope of varieties. The local economy will benefit because as a consequence of the exemptions, there will be new introductions into our pool. The international aspect is important because we will also become traders in this global seed space, not only for rice, for cowpea, for maize, but for things like cut flour, things like, um, uh, like sugar cane, things like ginger, things like um, all those crops that are domestic to us that we are not benefiting anything from now. The oil palm story has been said, so what are we saying in more simpler forms? Of course, we will get better yield. There will be profitability. There will be better resistance to pests and diseases, stress tolerance, availability, crop quality, input efficiency, varietal diversity, and new market for our farmers to draw from. And of course, for the consumer and the society, reduce food costs because we can produce more. We can maximally utilize the land space that Nigeria has now to produce three, four times what we are currently producing with superior genetics that can give us three times what we are getting from uh, what we are using now. Efficient land use, nutritional quality and taste, storage quality, diversity of product, all these are the things that will come with the introduction of this good act that is uh, there for Nigerian farmers. So who can protect a plant variety under this PVP Act? There is no restriction on who can be considered as a breeder under the PVP Act. A breeder might be an individual, a farmer, a researcher, a public or a private institute, or you and myself, because the space is now wider for all of us uh, to play. Thank you very much. This is the message from the Seed Council. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Joe and Dr. Kalola, for that very interesting presentation. Uh, it's, uh, it has clarified some of the issues. However, from the feedback I'm getting, it has also created some ambiguity as well. In the sense that one of the comments I've just received is that you keep emphasizing that there will be better return on investment before people will invest. You keep emphasizing that they, you will have improved genetics. And, but also you keep saying, you've also said that it's not about GM. So there is a bit of, when you say that we have more better breeds, better this, better this, and using the term genetics, and GMO is more, means genetically modified. And of course, you know, in developed societies where you have clearly GMO foods and organic foods, organic foods are normally more expensive than genetically modified foods. And genetically modified food means that these food products have been genetically modified in terms of using chemicals to modify their gene, the genes of the product to now give you higher output, to now give you higher yield, to now give you, what, well, of course, in terms of the quality, in terms of this, 
it might be lower than organic foods. So the question that I've just received is, when you say that you will have more varieties, better varieties, better uh, uh, genes, are you not saying almost the same thing that these products will be genetically modified? So I mean, it, it, it's, it's a bit, it might be good for you to provide proper clarity when you say PVP is not about GMO. But in your presentation, you seem to be alluding that PVP is more or less accepting and including GMO. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, that. And let me say, time will not permit us to go into, you know, the topic of genetics. Uh, genetics is, uh, we, we have conventional breeding and we have, you know, non-conventional breeding. So the uh, non-conventional breeding is the aspect of GMO, genetic modify, modification. But in conventional breeding, we have other tools we have hybridization we have tissue culture we have in vitro propagation we have a lot of tools that have not been exploited in nigeria uh, by hybridization i mean when you take a parent and another parent and you cross them together and the offspring which of course have combined naturally the characteristics of the two parents is what you are now trading and people are getting better yield so that is what in our own patterns, genetics is a general language. It doesn't necessarily talk about genetic modification. So this, the, 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 the um, subject of genetics is so wide. So we are talking of improvement of genetics, improvement through natural selection. The, there are a lot of breeders on this table and breeding is all about selection, is all about combining ability of parents into one and that one is now superior. We all, let's use the case of uh, dogs. We see the Alsatian dogs and we see a local dog. When you meet a, an Alsatian and a local dog, you get a dog that is more of a, a local dog, but is uh, more adapted to our own stress and everything. It's also in poultry where you have broilers, you have noilers. Those are not genetic modification. So what we are saying is, for all the other crops except maize today, where we have hybridization, we have that technology. It can also be introduced into rice. Now in China and in India, they are talking of hybridization in rice in a lot of countries. Even the vegetables we import, they are hybrid vegetables because they've been uh, the work of combination of parents, superior parents. One is stress tolerant, one is, uh, uh, is um, um, it's tolerant to lodging. They combine all these things naturally through selection and you get a better one that will respond better to climate change and give better yield. So that is what we are saying. And that is purely what the PVP is all about. It has nothing to do with genetic engineering. It has nothing to do with genetic modification. Those things are handled by the biosafety laws of the country and in no way related to the plant variety protection law. So I think that should clarify and uh, you know erase that uh, notion. And I think we should be true Nigerians and maybe some people should come to experts and ask uh, questions rather than just, you know, uh, believing that, okay, everything is all about GMO. We in the council, we are there for one, our motor is ushering in quality seats and our law is to support farmers to get good, the best in every area. So that is what we are bringing to the table and not a genetic modification. There is already a biosafety law that deals with that in Nigeria. Okay, Th thank you very, very much for that clarification. I believe that uh, uh, with that clarification, we're in a better uh, understanding of what the issue is now. And I think that includes also with uh, Mr. Bassi, who is raising his hand, but I want to, it might be good for us to confirm from him whether his, uh, your clarification has, uh, has provided answers to his question. Mr. Bassi, please. Thank you very much. I've heard all the arguments that the, the bill is not about GMO, but the bill clearly has clauses that talk about GMO very, very clearly. And I did mention the clauses. So this can, and in it, fact, it, it's not only what is written. When you look at the law, maybe you had intention in your mind, but it's what is written that we're talking about. The documents are available for everybody to read, so we can all read it and interpret it. And lawyers are going to interpret it. 
the plant breeders or wherever they are going to interpret it. I already see some very good comments in the Q and A box. I think I think the council should look at those questions and stop denying what is obvious from what we are seeing. And don't tell me you are the expert and therefore I can't say anything about this issue because this this is a public issue. It's about food. We are eating my food and I'm planting a seed or eating is a food is not a commercial matter. This nation cannot just be concerned with promoting uh, transnational seed corporations or promoting industrial seed producers. We are talking about a country where most of our farmers are small scale farmers. Don't just say we are promoting, supporting them by word. We want to see the support in, in practice. And this bill, this bill does not provide that. It's all about vested interest in transnational corporations, in those who have registered varieties elsewhere, just coming to Nigeria, then this, they will sit on the council and just sign it off. That's what the bill says, clearly stated. And I want to make two more comments about, about the issue of population. Population, first of all, 200 million Nigerians, that's a fictitious population. Let's just agree with this. We don't have a clear statistics on this. But even if it was correct, the population does not grow on in a geometric rate. It doesn't just keep growing. Population grows when you have poor social conditions, no education for the children, no, no security. And people, nature would just want to multiply so that a few will survive. If Nigeria has good education and the young girls who stay in school till they finish high school, before they get married, before they start having children, population will stabilize. This is what we've seen in Europe and North America. Population will stabilize and possibly drop. So that argument of population is an admission of failure of the state to address that issue. And the issue again of, we, we always underestimate what uh, productivity of small scale farmers. This underestimation and then promotion of what a few industrial farmers do doesn't really help the issue. Agriculture is culture. That's why we have culture in it. It's about life. It's a way of life for our people. And Nigerian institutions, Nigerian institutions should do what they can to support our people. We know the support to, to increase productivity. In the past, we had this, not, not plantation or colonial agriculture. We, what we're promoting now is just going back to colonial agriculture, which is plant, plantation or industrial agriculture, which is mainly for export, not for local markets. We need to look at our context. And our, those in authority in the government agencies must be humble enough to just sit down and look at Nigerians. I said, this is what the farmers need. This is what the man on the street needs. This is what the man in the village needs. Do they have, a, do they have roads to get to the farm? Do they have storage materials? Do they have... Do they have extension officers telling them what to do? If you don't have those, you can have all the laws you want. PVP law, plant variety law is not going to change anything. There are fundamental things we have to do before we start putting the, 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 the cart before the horse. Thank you very much, Mr. Bassi, for that very, um, also very interesting uh, counter contribution with regard to the presentation. And that takes us to some of the questions that we are getting. And the first one says, how many plant breeders do we have in Nigeria that has actually necessitated the need for a PVP bill? So the question is, how many do we even have in Nigeria that we said this PVP bill? And I would be happy if uh, uh, Dr. Ijama Akawu can answer this. Dr. Ijama, please. Yes, hello. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for that question. I happened to be so thank you for that question. So I happens to be the general secretary of the Nigerian Plant Breeders Association. And then when we were having our election December last year, we have more than 500 plant breeders in Nigeria. And that was amazing. You know, we were surprised to see that this number of plant breeders are in Nigeria and they are all Nigerians. So how do we encourage those people to actually like remain in practice? Like I said earlier, it takes like more than 15 years to develop a variety and plant breeding is a game of number. Diversity is all we do with plant breeding. If there is no diversity, you will not be able to do any plant breeding. You will not be able to do your selection. And varieties, diversity is a spice of life. And that's the same thing we do with plant breeding. So we have more than 500 plant breeders. And how do we encourage these professionals? How long it takes for them to go through the school, the BSc, the MSc, and the PhD level? 
you know, how do we encourage them? Set up even, like we have talked about the public sector not be sustainable. How can you encourage some of them to go into the private sector? Start up their own plant breeding business. You know, once we take it as a business, the narrative will change. The food security or the food insecurity we're talking will be a different ballgame. We can't rely on the government all the time. Thank you. So in a sense, what you're saying, Dr. Kogo, is that the number you have is a justification for PVP bill. Is that correct? Yes, we have more than 500 plant breeders okay. and in the country. Threshold. And that's a good threshold to support PVP bill. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. The next question is, why are we clamoring for a bill where we do not have active indigenous players involved? I'm not, playing at, I'm not paying attention to a farmer's bill of rights that largely has key players in numbers and are indigenous. But from what Dr. Akov is saying, he says that we have about 500, but this person is saying that we have more people um, who are farmers and it might be better to pay attention to farmer's bill of rights that has many people involved. Dr. Ojo, will you want to make a comment on this or answer this please? Okay, I'm not sure the DG is uh, maybe uh, close to his system. I'm sure he's also, he also has some other meetings to attend to. Uh, but uh, let me come in and say, even this is related to the first question, how yes, many readers do, do yes. we have? And uh, we are saying that the PVP Act, uh, we throw, it's just like you are asking how many actors do you have in Nigeria? You see a lot of people becoming, you know, actors, developing, coming out with ideas. Once we have this uh, law, then we would see that everybody in Nigeria can be a breeder from your own backyard uh, yard garden or a farmer that have discovered something in the in the in the past can all come out and say yes I'm a breeder. This law is saying it is not only people like Dr. Akaogu that has gone to the university and received degrees that are breeders, but even practicing farmers, uh, experts in various climes that have also endeavor to venture into agriculture and they have discovered something and they can prove that what they have discovered is distinct, is new and stable from all the existing varieties can become a breeder. So it means Nigeria will be full of breeders because uh, everyone practicing can now come up so far it can prove that what is bringing is new and it is distinct, uniform, and stable from all the existing materials. So uh, uh, for us, um, talking to the Farmers' Bill of Rights, the Seed Act, as it is currently, protect the right of farmers because our farmers have the right to you know uh, save and use their own seeds. So far, they are not commercializing it for money. That is clear. So no one will stop that right. The farmer's right is a right. It has been said it's a, it's a and it uh, it's a right. It's an human right, and no law will stop it. And we are saying that this law is also saying the farmer themselves are, you know, we say breeders. So don't let us look at uh, people like Dr. Ijoma and uh, Professor Egesi alone. This bill is not for them. It's for all Nigerians that can, you know, meet the criteria of a breeder. So the name breeder's right doesn't necessarily mean it's for this group of people. So that's what we have defined clearly in our presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Kola. And the next question goes to Professor Guess. He says 40% of all the pesticide products used in crop breeding registered in Nigeria have been withdrawn from the European market or are, or are heavily restricted due to potential chronic health and environmental effects, killing our soil quality and creating indigenous plant varieties. This 40% represent about 57% active ingredients in 402 products that are still in use in Nigeria. Professor, guess to what extent will this bill address these dangers? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And uh, I don't think, I, you know, my first take, I said, what are we addressing here? We're addressing the PVP. Bill. So we shouldn't be asking the bill to address what is not under its purview or under the purview of the National Seed Council. 
Um, so we have Standard Organization of Nigeria, SON, and we have the Nigerian Customs, and we have those agencies meant to you know, check what uh, importation or what chemicals to use um, in production, in, 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 a, in a, any kind of production. In this case, we're talking about agricultural production and you're talking about pesticides. There are pesticides that we know that are not, that are not good for, um, that are not good for uh, uh, the environment. That is clear and we should desist from using it. But this bill has nothing to do on that. This bill is supposed to talk about uh, what you've been hearing, so that I don't repeat that. Um, uh, and uh, we should be asking the SON who are not here that question, how they will. So if you're going to give an advice, we're going to say National Seed Council should liaise with the SON to make sure that, but I mean, the National Seed Council has nothing to do with agro importation or usage. So what, is, what it is is the seed and the quality of seed that we are producing, the varieties of seed that, and, and the things around it. And uh, again, um, you had the DG of Seed Council say with uh, Dr. Folari about how we are going to make the Seed Act function together with the PVP bill. It's, it's, it's not going to function in isolation. It's not going to function without the Seed Act. And the Seed Act has spoken to the question of um, farmers and the kind of seed and the whether biodiversity or whether animals. This is Agricultural Seed Council. We are not talking about animals. We're not talking about um, uh, diversity per se. Um, diversity is part of the question, but not the core of this matter now. And there are other things. So we would not be asking the law to be redundant, to make others redundant. That's the summary of what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Gessi. And this also links up to the question by uh, Professor John Ekmeyer. He says, there is a more comprehensive bill, the Ministry of Trade since 2000 and 2001, which should be consulted by NELG. And he says, I am informed an effort by Nigeria to sign up to the UPOV 91. Then what is the relation between this bill and that effort? And to his own assessment, this bill does not include animal breeder and the rights of farmers and communities. And because of that, this bill is deficient in several sections. It should be withdrawn and benefit from a wider consultation. The need for an act to provide from the position of plant varieties and animal seeds. Farmers and communities' rights are matters related to it. It is not in doubt. I think this might be better addressed by following. So Professor Ekmeru is saying that this bill should be withdrawn because it's efficient and it hasn't taken into consideration animal breeder and the rights of farmers and communities. Is that Fuller? Uh, that, yeah. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, we appreciate this, uh, this uh, question. Uh, but let me say that um, uh, in the wisdom of Nigeria, uh, the council, the National Agri Seed Council has been given a scope and we are limited to operate within that scope. Uh, that is why we are the National Agri Seed Council and our scope does not cover uh, animal breeds and uh, other things that you know uh, we are saying we should bring into this bill. And what we run to is run with are things related to our scope. And what we have seen that is limiting the seed sector now, the agricultural crop seed sector, it's uh, what we are bringing on the table. We also have Department of Livestock and other section of the ministry that can take the issues of animal breeds and other things, and of course, relate them to uh, conventions uh, that are available if they exist and come up with you know uh, rights and things that we address their issue. But for now, what we, we are doing is purely uh, about the agricultural seed sector and uh, not other sectors that have been brought into this uh, discussion. So we want to, you know, run within the scope that we have and not 
go beyond the scope that we have competencies uh, to handle because we know that there are relevant actors that have competencies to look into these issues and there are laws that support this. The SEED Act for now supports the introduction of a plant variety protection bill and that is why we are pushing for it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. The next question comes from Dr. Kasimia Ifine, and he says that it is very misleading to exclude seeds protected by the proposed PVP Act from GE crops. Please, the seed council is not truly living up to the primary mandate of the seed council, and which you've, uh, um, Dr. Kola, you've tried many times to, 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 to address. And this relates also to what Mariam Bassi is saying. He said that some speakers are double speaking. They are saying the seeds are not going to be GM seeds. But we all know as we speak, Nigeria is already flooded with GMO products. The agency in charge now cannot even monitor GMO. I wonder how the seed council will monitor and ensure sincerely and in truth that the seeds will not be GM seeds or the GMO profiteers will not speak, sneak in their seeds. Do they have the seed cash capacity to monitor this? At least this comes back to you, following as well. Yeah, thank you very much again. And uh, let me say that uh, uh, the seed council has a very unique role in uh, the con coordination of seed uh, industry activities in Nigeria. And uh, by our mandate, we have the uh, a full department of seed inspectorate that you know monitors and uh, track the use of seed, the commercialization, the use, deployment of seed. And just recently, the seed council has introduced what we call the national seed tracker, and of course the seed codex. Uh, the seed codex is a turnkey electronic authentication system that help us to trace and track all available seeds in the country. And now we are saying by way of a policy that any seeds that will be sold in Nigeria must carry the seed codex. So um, when it comes to commercialization of GM seeds, that is something that is under the seed act. And uh, once the biosafety regulation, the biosafety conditions and everything has been met, the mandate of the council is to ensure that any seeds, even if it is GM seeds, let me emphasize that those seeds will be handled by the biosafety rules, the, uh, the biosafety agencies. And once they have uh, approved the utilization of such seeds, before it can go into commercialization, the council comes in to ensure that the farmers are protected. Those seeds, when they will go into the market, are clearly they built and mentioned so that the farmers who will use them we now have a choice. He will see it clearly. So the council will come up with regulations and guidelines as to commercialization and deployment of GM seeds. We are working on that now, but that is our own role. We don't have any role in whether the GM is, a, is biosecure, is safe for health or human consumption. There are other agencies that must have done that. Once it has passed that level, that is when it comes into the purview of the seed council to regulate. And what we do in that case is to ensure that everybody that would um, maybe deal with any of such seed must be accredited by the council. We monitor them to ensure that the minimum standard for seeds are met and those things are well declared and farmers are not uh, maybe uh, in a way deceived. So it, the, the farmer will be told clearly that is the con uh, position and where the council stands. So uh, we, we need to say that we have rules that we are implementing and we follow our own rules and we implement it. And when it comes to all these topics, we will do the needful in ensuring that the farmers are protected as much as the Seed Act empowers us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from Andrew Adeljo. David Adeljo Andrew. He said, how many plant breeder varieties have we successfully bred in Nigeria? And he said, considering the long time it takes to successfully put a variety to take intellectual property, how soon can our research for food security or can our search for food security be supported by this bill? I think Dijama will be, Dijama, Dijama will be in a better position to provide some insight to this. So the question is, 
How many plant varieties have we successfully bred in Nigeria? And considering the long time it takes to successfully put a variety to, to take intellectual property, how soon can our search for food security be supported by this year? Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Like I said earlier, we have produced a lot of a lot of plant varieties that have been bred here in Nigeria. We have a lot of maize varieties that have been bred in Nigeria and even released. The same thing with the cowpea, you know, the rice and the sogo. They are countless that we cannot even like mention. Now, good question, Mr. Andrew Ilo. How do we make it sustainable? That is where this bill comes in. You know, the plant breeder developed this variety, release it, it gets to the seed companies. The seed companies are the ones that sales make gain out of it and the breeder doesn't get anything in return. And looking at the long time it takes and the, with the few funding for research, you know, how to also make the breeder to continue in his own research, the funding because of the limitation, because we know that if a lot of uh, pests and diseases, you know, comes up every year. Let me use the maize as a variety. We know in 2016, we experienced the four army one. And where the four army one came in, it was devastating. You know, a lot of countries that planted maize, even Nigeria inclusive, we lost a lot of varieties of maize that were planted. Now, how do you make these plant breeders to go back? They have to go back to the drawing board to start looking for new varieties, you know, that are resistant to this new pests because it wasn't there. It was just a new imagined pest. How do they get those things? So getting those plant breeders bill or the PBP bill will make it sustainable for them to remain in business. But I said it, when we take plant breeding as a business, the narrative is going to change. The food security we are talking about is going to change. We have a lot of plant varieties that has been developed and they are out there in the market with the seed companies, with the farmers. But promotion of it too, you know, this bill is going to, like Folari rightly said, a lot of people would come in, not only professionals like me that have gone to school to do the plant breeding, a lot of people that see it as business, you know, profit would also come in because we we'll talk about it, it also has to be profit oriented, you know, and then we'll be able to feed our population. Looking at the kind of money we invest in importation. That's why that we provide maize, we produce maize in, in, in this country. We still, uh, you know, import a lot of maize because what we are producing is not enough to feed our population. Look at cowpea. Nigeria is the, the largest producer of cowpea in Africa. And ironically, Nigeria is also the highest importer of cowpea in Africa. How do we balance these gaps? So this is also the narrative that having this plant breeders bill in place is going to you know, help to address. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kowal, for that uh, uh, answer, which I think has provided clarification to the question. And there's a question from Azubike Mokoye. And when you talk about increased productivity, evidence has shown that agroecology achieves higher and sustainable production within high, within smaller portions of land. And he says that, so let's not talk about increasing population and our inability to feed ourselves. What is the framework or mechanism in the field to support agroecology with PVP and in the face of climate change mitigation and adaptation. I think I will be happy if uh, Professor Gessi can say something with regards to this question. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you, Mr. I hope it's Mr. Mr. Zubike Mokoye. Um, so evidence has shown, I don't know what evidence you're talking about. Um, the evidence we have in Nigeria is very clear to you and I. We are a net food importer. It's also clear to Africa and other African countries, except maybe South Africa, every, and, and I mean Sub-Saharan Africa, um, except sub South Africa. Every other country is a net food importer. 
And I don't know which other countries in the world ap apply more agroecology based agriculture as you, as you so term it, or organic agriculture if they mean the same thing. Um, so so we, the, the evidence points to the contrary. I must tell you that um, that, that, that kind of a, a productivity or production system does not support um, um, big populations. So whether we like to accept or not, uh, we go by facts. And the facts for Nigeria says that by the National Population Commission says Nigeria has grown up to an estimated 200 million. So it's not an exact number, but we're not far from that number. And that number is huge when you compare it to the landmass we have and uh, you know, the productivity that we are having in our agriculture to feed. We, we can feed our nation. I mean, look at the restiveness that we've had over the past few years, and you are seeing it playing out now uh, in the inflation, 30%. So, so you, it's, the evidence is clear that we cannot continue this way. Um, so I can give you more, but let me say the framework or mechanism to support agroecological uh, uh, within the PVP is not what the PVP should be addressing. Again, we're asking the PVP to become bogus for what it ought not to be carrying. Um, um, uh, in the face of climate change mitigation and adaptation, it is something that they, 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 they think that is what they should be dealing with. If I'm bringing a new genetics or seed, uh, a new seed, improved variety or improved cultivar to the market, and I want to have it protected, one of my key things, one of my key motivations of value proposition will be, um, that this seed is able to withstand drought, or this seed is able to withstand flooding that will happen around the Benue, River Benue basins. So if I have such seed that can withstand it, it is to my own credit, it is as a, as a breeder or a seed company to market it. And, and that is what it should be. So the, this bill is meant to make that thing happen. Otherwise, it will not happen. All the all the deprivations and the sufferings and the losses of the past years is because I mean, not 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 um, uniquely because of the bill, but the, the absence of the bill is part of the issue. And when the bill is there, then we are having all the tools we need to make productivity uh, larger, to help us also feed uh, a teeming population, um, to make us able to. To, to increase our productivity and even become food exports. Uh, if we don't move from food importation to self-sufficiency to net exporter, we are not going to make progress in Nigeria as far as, far as agriculture is concerned. And we, 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 I mean, I'm finding it difficult to see people argue for us to continue things the way they have been when we clearly know that the way it's been has failed us and to continue to fail us. Um, I think, uh, okay, let me stop it there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Gessie. The second to the last question we're going to take today is uh, more or less relating to what uh, uh, Mr. Baxi earlier highlighted. And in terms of the gaps or says, let me look close in the bill. And the question then is what buffer does NSC have in place to deal with emerging issues? A typical example is seed hackers who will likely be the system. And this also, so I will want uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Fola to, to address the two questions together. There is one from uh, Mr. Simon Pitaba. He said we should be thinking also to make genome, genomic catalog of all the varieties released in Nigeria. If there is nothing like that, this will help us to track and compare future varieties that will be released in Nigeria. So Mr. Kola or Dr. Ojo, I'm not sure if Dr. Ojo is still with us, but if not, uh, Dr. Okola, please, can you address these two questions? One is about people, challenges or loopholes that Mr. Bassi earlier highlighted. And an example is seed hackers. And the second one is if we have a genomic catalog in Nigeria, and if we don't, are there plants, are they, um, um, interest to develop something like that. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, 
uh, we have in Nigeria a national catalog of uh, crop varieties released in Nigeria, and you can see that on the website of uh, NAGRAB. NAGRAB is the Niger National Center for Genetic Resource and Biotechnology. They are based in Ibadan, so uh, we can share the website for people who want to see the catalog of released varieties. And uh, what the council is doing in addition to that is currently we are developing crop variety descriptors and we are doing a catalog of uh, uh, crop varieties that are, you know, in Nigeria uh, for trade. I, this document will come out soon. This is a catalog of series of maize varieties and their characteristics. And this is part of what the council is doing. We have uh, for or, um, for soya bean, I don't know if people can see it, and we have also for rice, and we are going to work to develop more of these uh, crop descriptors for a whole lot of crops. We will continue to do that, and this is also in a bit to check, you know, Akas and the people that we are, we are talking of. And above all, I did say that we have the um, seed codex which is uh, the electronic authentication uh, tracking system and the national seed tracker where everybody that is a seed producer must from the point of you know even declaring his interest to produce uh, register and tell us everything that he will be doing as per seed so that we can trace and track the productivity of all these uh, players so the council is doing all this and we are ready to do more and let me say that um, for us in the council we are very very willing and open to partner with uh, uh, Mr. Bassi and his team to after some years, you know, let us look at where we are with the introduction of the PVPP. I'm sure that we will all come back to agree that this is a good decision for Nigeria. We in the council are open to, you know, uh, effective collaboration and partnership, and we are ready to listen and to tell everybody that the implementation of the PVP Act lies solely with the council. And it's not only the act that, you know, helps in taking the actions that people are you talking to. As Nigerians, we will develop regulations and guidelines as to how we want to see uh, some of these things done and the interests that we want to protect as Nigerians protected. We will not put all those uh, in the law, but they will be in the guidelines regulations that will guide us in implementing the law. So these are things that uh, the council is uh, going to also put in place apart from the law as passed because the law is never a complete document but we work with regulations and guidelines and all these things are also uh, made provisions for and will develop them. So we would also engage them in the development of these uh, guidelines and regulations so that the interests of Nigeria farmers are protected. But above all, our own interest is to make sure that we can feed ourselves. People don't continue to import things that Nigerian farmers can produce and make money to feed their children and take care of their family into Nigeria and we spend huge foreign exchange to bring this thing all because those who are producing them don't want to produce locally because there's no protection for them. And this is what we are bringing. And even our own indigenous seed system can also quickly learn and transform and we can become uh, a, 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 a big, uh, we can have multinationals, UBA, uh, Zenith Bank and all these big banks are across Africa. Why won't our own seed companies also go outside of Nigeria and become the giants there as multinationals are coming here today to be giants. These are the things that we can do with the PVP law. So don't let us limit uh, the scope of what we can become. We are the giant of Africa and we can become the true giant when we can inv in invest in local breeding, develop varieties that will be adapted to seed star countries in West Africa. Uh, all the Francophone countries are members of ARIPO. ARIPO is a part of UPOF. Ghana has signed the PVP Act. Everybody is becoming a, a, a PVP uh, responsive country. So let us also do the same so that Nigeria will not be a dumping ground. Let us remember that we have also signed the AFCTA and it means 
a lot of things uh, if we don't do what we need to do to make sure that the enabling policy environment is created for production of best quality uh, superior uh, plant materials in Nigeria people will produce it and they will bring it for our farmers. Our farmers will continue to work for those people. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Fala, for that um, uh, answer to the question. And also, let me use this opportunity to, to thank all our panel members. And as in conclusion, I'll be happy for them to, based on what we've heard today, in terms, particularly the issues, particularly the the controversies with regards, particularly in terms of uh, how this bill will affect our smallholder farmers, the issue of the, uh, the term of the bite food and all that and all that. I'll be very happy to invite our panel members to just use one minute as a closing remarks, particularly in terms of how we can address some of these issues. And let me start by calling on Dr. Ijoma Akogu, please. Just one minute. Dr. Ijama, can you hear me? Okay, let me call on Professor Egesi, please. Thank you. Um, so, having heard all and all the concerns, I think I want to uh, ask that we are all uh, calm. Um, I speak as a Nigerian and as a patriotic Nigerian. I, I don't represent any interests. So when I say, let us calm down, I'm saying that we are doing this in the best interest of our nation, which I live in. I have my children here, I have my family here, and I have you all here. So we are all here and we have all equal stakes. And our stake is to make sure that Nigeria does not suffer. I like the remark of uh, Dr. Falola about AFCTA. We cannot be a dumping ground, but we've signed up to be if we don't do the right things in, in place. So this is part of making it happen for us. And as a plant breeder, I think I've been I've been a plant breeder for about 22 years. And uh, I, I, I think I know the deprivations and the demotivation around um, uh, 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 breeding, plant breeding and how breeders react. And being the president of the Nigerian Plant Breeders Association, I, I know what my members go through. So this is going to be a game changing bill if it's passed. It's going to change the game for the plant breeders to begin to operate on a, a different climb and begin to give us better uh, products than what we have had in the past. And it's going to be, because there's one thing we checked, how many children, how many of our children want to become plant breeders? When they look at their parents, they don't want to be. So this is going to change the whole thing, make young people want to be, become plant breeders, make even people like Ijoma and uh, Falala said, even if you're not a trained plant breeder, but you can be a, a socialized plant breeder because you see the economics and you see the opportunities. So we have everything at stake to make this happen. And it's important for Nigeria not to miss this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Gessie for that closing remarks. And let me now invite Mr. Nimon Bass to also make his closing remarks. Uh, as I said, particularly with the issues that have been raised, even though some of them, I'm not sure they've been addressed to his satisfaction. But in terms of going forward, we've seen that there are benefits with the PVP. We also seen that there are some issues. But to your own assessment, Mr. Bassi, how do we resolve this and move forward. Thank you very much, uh, moderator, uh, for the way you piloted the affairs. Um, let me just say that we are all Nigerians and there is a huge gap of trust issue between Nigerians and people in public offices. We have to accept this, especially at this time. Uh, but that notwithstanding, I want us to keep bear in mind that the sudden, the interest of the multinational seed companies in Africa, African seed market, is nothing to do with the interest in Africa's small scale farmers. We have to understand what our context is. And the notion of monopoly rights is alien to African agriculture. 
and you can't wish that away overnight by one law. You just go, you're going to create a situation that is complex and creates more difficulties for our people. Some of our laws place too much discretion in our director generals or whoever the registrar and so on and so forth. The same thing we see in this bill that is under consideration. And finally, I would like to say that it is extremely important and an opportunity to have a good bill, a bill that addresses as many gaps as possible before it is signed and after it has become law. Once it becomes law, it's a lot more difficult to change it. So right now we should, I want to recommend that we go back to the drawing board, review that law, have broader consultations, and whatever is come out, whatever come emerges at the end, that will be in the best interest of everybody. Uh, I would also support that. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Bassi. I think uh, this last comment is, is uh, um, very encouraging and very, I think it's more or less uh, reconciliatory with your previous, uh, which is good actually. That what it means that we all have to work together to make the bill, to make Nigeria a better place. Because we, as Professor Gessi said, and as all of us have also mentioned, we are all Nigerians, we are all patriotic, we all live here, and we want the best for the country. So on that note, let me say a very, very big thank you to all our panel members, Dr. Ijama Kogu, Dr. Philip Ojo, Dr. Chidozier Egesi, Mr. Neman Basi, and Ms. Dr. Numiwa Alaba, and also to my humble self that have moderated this session. And I think, as you all know, that what we've had today is that the PVP bill is an important bill. It has many benefits, but of course, nothing is perfect. It has some challenges, it has some shortcomings, which we need to look into. And there is this old Honda car that is called discussion continues. So what it means that this PVP bill has not come to an end is something that we have to look into properly to address all the key issues that we've noted as shortcomings or as uh, challenges, particularly how it will affect our smallholder farmers, given the fact that our 80% our of our farmers are still smallholders and are still rural, and also the issue of the health implications of the PVP bill, whether it is included or not included, but of course, there are certain things that might not be included, which might later in reality become included. So what it means that we all of us have to work together as patriotic Nigerians to make the bill a bill for Nigeria and a bill that will work for the interests and benefits of all Nigerians. So on that note, on behalf of Nigeria, uh, the chairman, the CEO and the staff of NESG and all our partners, the seat council and other partners that have supported this presentation, I say a very, very big thank you and I wish you a good afternoon. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>